Hello everyone! Welcome archaeologists! It is Sunday night, and that now means it is time for the Weekly Dig. For anyone new to the stream, this is a live show where we dig into anime old and new. Used to stream on Saturday, we're now streaming on Sunday for a change. I am Brent, these are my wondrous co-host John. Konbanwa, Mina. And Steve. <laughs> Hello! And let us start our dig night. I actually just realized um, I did not pop out our typical little uh, thing here so I can show you all. Um, so we're going to talk about a rather unusual anime film. Um, and oh, yep, I just got to remove things around a little bit so people can see things. Um, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. I'm going to pronounce it Princess Arete. Uh, that will be our subject. Um, as always, spoilers lie ahead uh, as we dig into Princess Arete. Now, as we were saying before, this is a um, uh, an a movie with an interesting provenance. It was it's based on a feminist fairy tale, uh, a book written as a feminist fairy tale. So the idea is the uh, the princess saves herself, rescues herself. Um, but the staff was primarily men. The director was a, was a guy. So he was very concerned about um, making sure he was um, portraying that accurately. Um, and uh, so he, he made some kind of decisions about how he, he, he did the film, which might, might get into it. Um, full disclosure, though, um, it's an hour and 44 minutes, and it is long. It is yes, it is. <laughs> slow. Um, that is very much the kind of film it is. Uh, now, Stephen John, I, I assume you had not had a chance to, to watch this before our assignment this week. No, yeah. Yeah. never even heard of it. New, new to me. Uh, yep, never even heard of it either. I, I hear that. Um, and uh, for what it's worth, I cannot see chat for some reason. Um, oh, uh, YouTube. Oh, there it is. I just have to pop it out. I will do it that way. Um, but uh, yeah, so it is. Uh, it's an interesting kind of a thing. Um, I come across, stumbled across this. I don't know, a couple of years ago. Um, I have no idea where, and it just somebody had recommended it to me, and I went ahead and watched it, and really, really enjoyed it. Um, um, I guess let's start with kind of the, the, the general question: kind of what were your what were your overall thoughts <clears throat> on the film? John, want to start us out? Well, I saw it the first time <laughs> with no subtitles, <laughs> yep. which means I got exactly 20 minutes into it and I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. And then woke up at the last five minutes thoroughly confused. <laughs> yeah. But then I went back and watched it with subtitles. It made much more sense. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it, it did some unexpected stuff mm -hmm. for the time period that it was. Yeah. Um, that I, I mean... I literally was not expecting it to go that direction, especially after the first like half an hour, 40 minutes of it, where you think it's kind of a standard princess fairy tale yeah, story. Right. Um, and then it just, it doesn't, it's, it's, yeah. it just moves to a new direction that I was just like, Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it is certainly, I, I'll agree. It's a, it's a long story time yeah that you don't ha you you've got some indications of action that have had that have happened but you do not have a lot of like like biting your nails at the edge of your seat kind right. of stuff going on where it's just like <gasps> so very um very story driven but i can't say it's a tremendously character driven like mm -hmm. i don't get a lot of feeling yeah. for all the surrounding characters backgrounds mm -hmm. that fleshes out the kind of world mm -hmm. um good I, I'm I'm curious to know the the context in which it was brought up to you to see it, Brent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, because it seems it seems it like there's it's it falls into somebody's zone for a specific reason, and I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, yeah. So that was my initial feeling there. Mm -hmm. So Steve, Steve? so uh, <clears throat> I had a, a a similar similar initial wash to to John. Um, I, I have a new laptop and and having it. A new laptop means that you have to download things, and I forgot that. So, you know, and so I couldn't get mm. subtitles to work. And what I wound up doing at first was I went onto YouTube and I said, okay, well, 
you know, let's click on subtitles and see if I can make it work. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I told you guys this, but I got the Japanese type of subtitles, right? Very helpful. And so, so I'm like looking at that, I'm like going, okay, um, hmm. And I, you know, madly pressing buttons mm -hmm. and somehow it actually started to translate the Japanese into oh, the English. Cool. No, because <laughs> it was all gibberish. Okay, like yeah. it, it, it just, it just wasn't, you know, it, 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 that's, you know, the things about languages is particularly if you have a completely different written form and yep. idea behind that written form, things are not, you know, as this saying goes lost in translation. Mm -hmm. And it was very much lost in translation. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, much like John for about 20, 30 minutes, I'm like saying, you're going, I, I need to see this. Okay. I need to, oh God, I can't, I just can't. And so finally, after a while, I figured out what the problem was like for you, for you all, but um, not that sometimes I watched it. And my initial reaction was, um, this is going to sound like I'm being hypercritical of it. I'm not, it's just that, you know, it's just one person's opinion of this is, and, and Johnny kind of hit on it was this is not a movie I would choose for myself. Mm, right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and it's not in my wheelhouse. It's not something that would be obvious to me. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, here's something. So I'm equally as curious to see where in your life this came in and, and you said, Oh, I'm going to watch this. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how, where, where did that come from? Yeah. But, um, it was slow. And, you know, even with, with the subtitles, which I thought it would speed things up a little bit mm. and it didn't, and it, it, it was interesting, but after a while I was just like, um, okay, okay. Little, little, little something, little action, just little, just little something, mm. give me something, <clears throat> but you don't really get that here. Yeah. Um, but what was, but I, what I did find interesting was all the alliterations to other fairy tales that, that made its way into into the story that is interwoven in the story. You'll find it's in its fun little Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. And Michelangelo's idea, yeah. concepts and ideas that come in, I'm sure we'll talk yeah. about later. Mm -hmm. And um, and you know, those those kinds of things. And when you realize mm -hmm. that you're not gonna be watching an action movie, yeah. you're gonna watching a movie, a fairy tale movie that's goes in a different bent, mm -hmm. um, you know, you actually sit down you settle and you go and you go with what the thought process and what the world building is and what all this stuff is and then you are happily rewarded mm -hmm. with things yeah as you watch as you watch this movie yeah well put um and i think the pacing of that that intro scene where arete is out with the people and kind of trying to get a job if you will um yeah right. th there's a really uh, uh effective job of establishing okay this is this is the kind of story we're telling you know, we, we, we're not starting with an action scene. We're not starting with this. It's just, it's very kind of everyday life. Um, yeah, I, I agree, John and Chad. I think that the, the pacing, once you get used to the pacing, like it works uh, for, for the story. Um, yeah, I think I came across it. I, and again, I don't remember, but I think it was the, um, it was in some kind of, a, you know, film studies context of somebody saying, here's a, an anime movie um, in which the, the princess rescues herself, um, mm. and it, it's intention. It's like it is meant to be a deconstruction of the classic fairy tale trope. Um, I was like, well, that that's interesting. I'm curious. Um, and then the visual style, just seeing screenshots, I'm like, oh, I like the. It actually feels almost like a, a medieval tapestry at times. Yeah. Um, kind of more muted colors. Um, uh, very kind of very simple character designs. Uh, which I actually like quite a lot. Um, I'm also kind of a sucker for children's films that aren't flashy and hyperactive. Um, I really like it when a, a film for, for kids kind of treats them with respect and gives them things to just kind of look at and absorb. Um, there are other movies, um, uh, something like that, um, that I, I like a lot. So yeah, that's kind of where I, where I came in. Um, and yeah, I had a, a, a very similar reaction. I was like, this is not the pacing I was expected. Uh, I was expecting, but it, but it goes there, and uh, and yeah, I mean, the themes are kind of fairly clear once you get into it. And you see what's what's going on. You know, you have this princess who's being wooed by all of these these guys, and notably, um, the things they're doing to woo her have absolutely nothing to do with her herself. Yeah. Right. They're all going out doing stuff, and that's supposed to me make her care about them. 
Um, which she just does not. Um, and then they show up in her bedchamber, which of course freaks her out, understandably. Um, and then they're like, I, I went and I did this great, uh, amazing thing. You know, don't you love me now? Well, no, I don't know who you from Adam. Yeah, that, that was a point when the, the first guy showed up and, he, and he's just like hanging outside the you know, window and he comes yeah. in. He actually comes in. And I'm like thinking to myself going, this is an 11 year old girl who's just like, get out. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> you know, dude, get out. You're like, you're like 20. Yeah. Get out. There, there are so many things wrong here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Please. You know. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It's just like, you know, love me because I want to rule your land. I don't really mm-hmm. care about you. Know, just, yeah. you know, I'm doing the thing. And I just love how she points out, oh, well, you love me so much that you completely screwed over the villagers to get the thing mm-hmm. to bring here. And now their village is decimated. It's just like, oh, you know, the second guy with the rose. And he goes, oh, she goes like, oh, great. You know, they work really hard to plant those things because they're not easy to grow. And you just plucked it. Great. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the things I also kind of appreciated about the movie is that she is so young. Like you know, they make it uncomfortable the age gap. Um, yeah. Which yeah. This is you know, and and again, to, and to be clear, in the, in the Middle Ages, um, girls would get married off young. They wouldn't necessarily you know consummate that young, but it would be like all you know figured out when arranged. They were arranged yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so the guys aren't coming in here saying, you know, let's get married tomorrow necessarily, um, or let's you know go off together tomorrow. Um, but still, like it, it still comes across as very, very creepy. Yeah. Well, it was also it was nice that these guys, even in their attempted mm-hmm. wooing, that n- even guy who gets in does mm-hmm. not do anything unsavory. Right. Yes, true. Right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? He's still pursuing her in this enclosed space, mm-hmm. but he's not pressing things. So well, it's like, thank you. I appreciate that. And what's funny is it's so, um, you know, it is so the uh, romantic fairy tale trope of the guy who breaks into Rapunzel's room to, you know, get and rescue her. Isn't that romantic that he climbed up the tower to go to, no, like, no, I don't find this no. romantic at all. Yeah. <laughs> A stranger hanging by a rope out outside wants to talk and come into my private space. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a little weird. Yeah, exactly. Well, then they point out too. It's like you know, I went and got this treasure or anything else, and he's like, "Well, isn't that what you wanted?" And she's like, "Uh, what? Uh, yeah." It's like, uh-huh. <laughs> "Is it what you wanted, or is this like something that you were, you had to say?" This is because it's you know, seems kind of obvious. The treasure chamber is packed full of stuff. Yeah. And it's alluded to later on and said, oh, you know, they're, oh, so the ministers will be happy to collect more magic items. Mm-hmm. And yes. it's just like, so did she send the knights on mm-hmm. these quests for things? Or did, yeah. is this part of like policy? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, we're just, we want to collect these valuable things that are out there in the world that will, you know, solidify our power. Yeah. And we're going to use her as this pawn towards that end. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's yep. like, oh, well, geez, this is a nice, nice political mm-hmm. kind of tone somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> great. Yep. Um, you know, women use as collateral. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, uh, yeah, and then... Um, uh, actually, John, I want, I want to... Uh, in chat, I want, I want to point that out. Um, how you see uh, Arate uh, crawling around in the, the back passages of the castle. And what a great metaphor, too, for how women have to use those back channels to get anything done, right? Yeah. Like, I, okay, we have this normal space, but no, to actually get what I want, I have to go out here and do this other thing. It's just, yeah, it's, it's so brilliant. Um, it's also nicely stated by, by the visitor friend that comes in mm-hmm. that, oh, so you studied the plans of this castle because these all these old castles had these things and it's like mm-hmm. ah so now you're you're you know indicating that Arete is not just captive princess in the tower mm-hmm. melancholy sad and she knows where she falls into this whole scheme it's like no i mean she's not just gotten out she mm-hmm. she's understood the layout and yeah. the, the scheme of the entire castle structure this is not mm-hmm. just a random chance she understands fully well what the diagrams and the diagraphs of this mean yeah it's like so you have the ability to spatially orient mm-hmm. things and mm-hmm. it's like there you go cool yeah that's not giving us a clue about her learnedness yeah exactly she's very smart mm-hmm. 
Um, and then, of course, um, Evil Wizard shows up. Um, as must. Um, um, and does this really interesting thing where he's like, okay, I can make her obey. Like, that's what you all want, right? You know, um, you want her to obey. And if I make her do that, then clearly I'm meant to be her husband. And so he casts a spell that basically wipes her of any personality. Yeah. And makes her comply. It's like, wow, if that isn't a metaphor. <laughs> Did it, it also make sense. her older? Yes. 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 And it completely changed her to what they wanted to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, in fact, like, that's the thing everyone says, wow, she looks like a princess now. Mm-hmm. 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 Exactly. Um, I actually had to watch that, like, and rewound mm. it and, and watch it again, because I was just, like, going, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They actually, like, changed her. It wasn't yeah. just, like, mm -hmm. you know, changing her person. Like, actually, yeah. she grew a little taller, her hair more fuller. Mm-hmm. And more transformed demure, into the white dress, dress. Yeah. yeah and you know the you know and is just you know the, the proper lady and i was just like okay we're going in an interesting direction here yeah and 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 not <laughs> i don't know how to put this so um what was the disney pixar movie of uh, irish girl brave 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 thank you and M Marita. you know yeah and so i I, I was like thinking of that and I was just like, I was like, okay, here's what you didn't get in that movie. At all points, she is rebelling, rebelling, fighting, fighting, fighting mm -hmm. in that movie. Mm -hmm. And this one, this, the wizard is successful. Right. Like there is success here for the, for the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And there is, and it's not just like a, a, a temporary thing. This is like, yep. done. Mm -hmm. And you go through a significant amount of time. Oh yeah. Watching this movie and going through this and which you know adds to the reward of how she actually gets out of this mm -hmm. yeah 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 that's a great point um and it's one of the horrifying things about the movie is you're like wow what's gonna happen like you know because she doesn't have the free will to fight back right um right she's, she's kind of stuck um and obviously, the, the the symbolism of you know you accept this this responsibility, and it just kind of, it does kind of mess with your head that this is what you have to do, and you're kind of stuck there. Um, yeah, and then they go off on to Steve's point, uh, Leonardo da Vinci's um, gyrocopter sort of design, yeah, which was very oh, that... cool, um, and a, a great little bit of of um, planting a seed for later. Yes. Of kind of what's going on with the, with the wizards and so forth, um, and off they go, and yeah, and she's been she's been captured, and then we go to uh, Act Two very clearly um, when she's immediately locked away in a dungeon um, with just no idea what to do um, and just stuck there. Now, at this point, she's been given the Ring of Three Wishes, and it's so interesting how that how that works because when she goes in she's surrounded by rats and all this nastiness and so what she does and I'll see if I can find a good image of it um, yeah she wishes to make the her prison cell look nice yeah not to get away not to escape not anything and all of it's fake like the window doesn't actually look out on anything but it just looks pretty. Um, and that's where she just stays. Well, arguably, it's not all that different than her being locked in the tower exactly. at the regular right. castle. So yep. it's like she's made it somewhat akin to where she's been held out all this time mm -hmm. anyway. Yep. It's like absolutely. it's just a, it's a different room, same circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Although I did get a little creeped out when the, all the rats hit the window. Yeah. Up high. <laughs> yeah. And hit Toad Boy, which, by the way, the character design of that mm -hmm. is very reminiscent of Kirby's Toad in the X Men, by the way. Oh, interesting. Ah. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. I was thinking Wind of the Willows, but yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Um, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. If you mm -hmm. Prefer exactly. the anime theme park, not anime, the theme park ride. <laughs> <clears throat> I would like to see the anime theme park ride of Mr. Toad's Wild Yeah, Ride. I would like to see that as well. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and, and then you, you start getting more about the, the wizard and what's going on with him. And I, again, very much this symbolism where he just sits around all day waiting, um, getting other people, women, to do his work, um, quite notably. Um, Making frogs. Making frogs. <laughs> for, like, an inexplicable reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Frogs for nothing other than the fact that he likes frogs, I guess. Sure, exactly. Um, and then you start layering in this thing that he's waiting for his people to return for him. Um, and he's just waiting around. And I, I love that, that moment when he and, uh, uh, and, and the frog guy are sitting around. Grumble. Thank you. Um, and... They're having that conversation about uh, um, how he's waiting around, and and he says, uh, you know, so stupid to just wait around, knowing no one's going to come. And wizard gets angry, and then discovers he's talking about the girl. And then throughout the rest of the scene, throughout the rest of this whole thing, you realize that he's doing the exact same thing she is. He's no better than she is. He's no better off, I should I should say, than she is. Yeah. He's he's just he's in his own prison. Yep. Well, they they allude to that when he's laying there mm -hmm. and he just lays there and he's just, you know, just looking out the window, and the window's barred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's looking out on nothing and he's not doing anything and come to realize why later on why he doesn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, the Gravel makes the point of, hey, can you make us some special sorcerer food? And the you know said sorcerer goes, why would I waste it on you? Blah 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 blah. Well, there's a reason, and yeah. we we learned that later on. But you're right, you know, it, it's just a, a period of waiting, and there's this 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 lethargy that just is going on everywhere in this castle. Yeah. The castle itself is run down. There's no desire to fix it. There's no desire to make it nice. There's no desire to do anything with it. There's no, you know, it, it's looking out on an ugly desert plain. It's just, and it's crumbling around him. And he's not doing anything. The only thing he's done is he, he, he it's this huge ass painting on the side of the mountain. Yeah. Next to, next to the castle of basically, essentially him. And maybe it's a, it's a like, kind of like, like a stranded guy on a desert island, you know, using rocks. Say yeah, help. SOS. SOS. Yeah. You know, just saying, hey, I'm here, I'm here, yeah. come get me. And, you know, there's that wonderful shot, downward shot going into the main chamber mm -hmm. where there's chunks of wood in the floor that's yeah. missing, mm -hmm. you know, and and just, just everything. And just him just not just not doing anything, not motivated to do anything. And then meanwhile, she's sitting down there in the dungeon and she's like, mm -hmm. um, I guess also. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and meanwhile, some people who are like you know really into action anime are screaming, pulling their hair, just going, <laughs> "Why is nothing happening?" I was waiting for the for the the cut scene to then like all the knights are like on horseback mm -hmm. and are sort right. of like, yeah, "We're not going to let the wizard win, you know, our kingdom," right. and then striking off on this journey. Nope. Nope. Yeah, you know, it's funny because at one point I really did think that was going to happen. Like the two knights were going to like lead the charge and go, you know what? Hey, we screwed up. Let's redeem ourselves and we're going to do this. Do the thing. Nope, that doesn't happen. And I was really kind of expecting a scene from um, Excalibur where they're riding through the cherry through the cherry trees. Mm. And what's the same with the name of the song, the famous song? That, uh, that, oh, Fortuna. Uh, Oh, Fortuna. Oh, yeah. Oh, Fortuna. Mm -hmm. But no, we get, we, we get big old bearded wizard. I hate everything and everybody. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, um, and then we get this wonderful scene. Um, um, as someone's saying, um, after Ample finally talks to her, you know, and she gets a conversation with a sympathetic soul. Um, Apple's trying to break her out. Um, it's then that um, um, Aretta has the kind of the realization 
um, as she sits, and she, she kind of talks through her story and what's been going on and um, kind of tells her own little fairy story to herself and kind of asks herself this question, like, is there hope? And she in herself says, yes, of course. And that's basically what breaks the spell. Um, and I love that because of the symbolism of the three wishes. Um, the first wish is, I'm in this horrible spot. I just need something to make myself not feel horrible. Right? I, I need to kind of center myself first. Then I need something to do. Right? I, I need some activity that is, that is productive. And so each one of those wishes is, is going from this point of kind of deep depression and kind of coming out in stages. Okay, first, I kind of said to myself, second, I, I can at least get some activity, I can at least be productive, at least do something. And then, with help from the outside, with somebody to kind of talk me through some things, I can make the next step to realize, you know, there is hope, there is some, there's something for me to do, and now you have the self-actualization. Now she goes somewhere. And that's when she calls in the Gundam. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I kind of wondered like, whether, well, yeah, whether Ample was mm -hmm. named that because of the the scarcity and the poverty of their village. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, oh, Good the call. wizard gets the wizard gets fed, the wizard gets his food, even though it's very simple. <laughs> yeah, something yeah. Green <laughs> with peas, maybe. Ah. Yeah. And he wears most of it in his beard. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, Ample is providing for him. Yeah. And yet, their village is just rife with scarcity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I think that totally tracks. Because um, I think, um, well, and you know, obviously, you know, the the, <laughs> the assistant is literally a toady whose name is Grovel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very fantasy naming, <laughs> fairy tale naming. Um. But yeah, R rinse wind the wizard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then um, or they, you know, basically, kind of, sort of escapes. Um, now, again, it should be pointed out that the the wizard wanted her to escape, um, but not quite in the same way. Um, and then off she goes. Um, and I love the scene with the well. Um, where she's yeah. trying to figure out the well because it is just watching somebody figure out a puzzle. Yeah. And just seeing that is just so much fun for me because, it, again, it's, it's, it's providing something for the audience to watch where they have to engage their minds and understand what's going on. It's uh, so wonderful. Um, um, yes, and then um, um, off she goes to kind of figure out the well and just start... Uh, pouring out the, the eternal water. Um, and then off she goes. Um, and then, again, you have, I, for me watching the movie, I had this wonderful realization as the water is filling up the, um, the castle of, oh, that's what she's doing. <laughs> she's basically destroying the castle from within yeah. um, using this thing. And then, of course, Water traditionally has very feminine properties. You know, classically, is kind of associated with women in, in various ways. Um, um, yeah, and then she basically confronts him, um, and um, John in the chat. That's a great point. Um, that when he that when when the wizard um, pops back into his sort of normal skin, he's young. And so I think he was left behind when he was very young. And so he is very much an adolescent. Um, he is very much not mature because he just has never had uh, a proper parental figure. Uh, which totally makes sense. Um, um, and then bad things happen. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, and then we get this long day them all with them kind of dealing with him and what that means. And then, then Arate is kind of uh, um, moving off into her own future. Um, 
And I'll be honest, I think the last third of the film, like, it really works. Um, but it is very much um, finishing off what happens in Acts 1 and 2. Like, for me, there wasn't a lot of... I wasn't hugely... You know, there weren't a lot of twists and turns in the last third. Um, it's more, okay, she's getting out, she's kind of, kind of doing that, and, and goes off on her own little, little story there. Um, uh, to wherever, wherever she's going to go. Well, I was wanting so much more out of the, really? the last half of this. It's really? like, she figures out the water crystal by mm-hmm. looking in the book. Mm-hmm. But it's like, the book doesn't play... It obviously is important, because she did not take the little walking chest. She didn't take the little dancing fairy mm-hmm. in, the, in the ball. Yeah. She took the book. Mm-hmm. The book's got knowledge in it. Yeah. It's obviously got knowledge about some of the technologies that are involved with the wizard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The wizard looks just casually through the book, spills stuff on it, smears yeah. it. She figures out the water crystal by looking at the book. But she, there's not any, like, who made the book? You're not looking through mm-hmm. the different parts of it and be like, oh, I could, this is the other thing. You just, just you see the giant golden eagle. Mm-hmm. There's no, like, is that a ship? Is that, like, a rescue pod that the wizard's supposed to get on? Is, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, are there, how are these things related? She sees it. And yeah. it flies around, and it's just yeah. like, oh, that's cool. And then she just moves on. It's like, yeah. okay, I, I see where you're, you're, you're. The focus is her. It's not on the things that are going around. It's not that these meteorites are coming down. Mm-hmm. They're actually, you know, orbital satellites and blah. You're just yeah. letting that aside. You're, those things pop into the story, and then you just focus on her and just mm-hmm. where she's going to go. Mm-hmm. I get that, but I'm left wanting so much. I'm like, what mm-hmm. about the satellite? What is go- oh. What is that? Th- Why is there a giant eagle? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Yes, I did yeah. it. <clears throat> Oh, I wanted that. I wanted yeah. the answers to those I, things. I, it, I was, I'm kind of with John with in, in, in so far that I, th- I felt that there was supposed to be a different ending for the sorcerer. Okay, I hear that. So, yeah. so mm-hmm. you know, when it, it, it's the ending is that, that it stands is fine with him standing there looking at his own two hands because that's the point that she's trying to make. Yeah, which is. You know, you you have to make your own magic. You have to do your own thing. You yeah. have this is this is what you have to do. And he's been reliant upon his his crystals and the technology and all this because you know the the book for him is simply no more than a um, how to manual for your microwave. Right. I mean, that's, yeah. that, that's literally what it is to him. Mm-hmm. So you know, like he he understands the basic core concepts like of making the water. He, but he can't figure out how to make the thing work, but she does mm-hmm. because she's looking at it in a different way and she's using her hands to make the magic work. And Well, she you know, says that earlier in the film about looking at, I'll, I'll look at all the things that people have made. Yeah. Right. That, you know, humans have made. Mm-hmm. It's like, as and, opposed to you know, magic. Yeah. And when you tell the story, of course, we're, you know, we should all know that we're talking spoilers here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when we're talking, that when he's telling his story about how he's basically left behind, He's talking, and the ships left. I was just like, "Oh, here we go, sci-fi." Okay, mm-hmm, right. that, that's where we're going with this. But that's the whole point: is that there's no magic here. It's it's just mm-hmm. technology that he's using. When when he's calling to look on on her to see where she is and what how things are going, it shows her, but it, it looks like from ample from behind, and he's thoroughly confused. He's he's banging it mm-hmm. like it's a TV set, going, you know, yeah, yeah. "Hey, I can't get the reception," mm-hmm. you know, and it's it, you know so. My thought was for him, the ending was going to be that he would be the boy, first of all. Mm. He would not stay as the man. He would be oh, as the okay. boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would be the boy, and they would and she helps him basically to figure out how to leave and go back with his people because that's really his desire. And and, yeah. and one of the things that, that that you know throughout the movie that you get a sense of is that yeah, he's the bad guy. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. he's the antagonist and all this stuff. Is he evil? No. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I, You know he's he's misguided certainly, mm-hmm. and he's not a nice person. But he's, he's not immature. Evil or he's immature. Mm-hmm. Hey, he's a child. Yeah. And so I thought for the ending for this for him would mm-hmm. be that the golden eagle was his ticket out. Right. Yeah. And that and that she was the one who found it, who worked it out because of self-empowerment and right. going, this is the thing and I made a promise to you and to do this and so I'm going to carry out my promise and then it just ends with him just like as an adult looking at his hands and going, you know, what the hell do I do now? You know, it's just kind of like yeah. uh, 
and he doesn't really learn anything because he's he's still looking for the crystal yeah see i i, I agree that I, I found the ending very odd for him um but i think it anything else would have undercut the metaphor i think you know a film about a woman kind of finding her own way and then having the guy have a happy ending and then all men go away basically I think wouldn't have fit with kind of the, the, the story that she's trying to tell. I think that the point is, you know, the men are still around. They're still there doing their things. Hopefully they actually get in the fields and get their, their hands dirty and get something done. Um, and that's kind of their role. But they stay immature and wrapped up in themselves and looking for the stone, you know, looking for the easy way out. Um, and you're just not going to fix that. That, that, that's what I got out of it. Mm. Um, but I agree. It, it felt unsatisfying in a kind of a, you know, plot way. Right. Um, but yeah. Um, you know, I don't think it was unsatisfying. I just thought it was going to go in a different direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah well put, well put. Yeah, I like the princess that she's, you know, fully invested in in what she's going to do. She's not mm -hmm. running back to, to the kingdom. She's got her goat. Yeah. She's going and doing her thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it just, you know, it's like, I I had things I wanted to know out of the end of it mm -hmm. that weren't, weren't pertinent to her, like, self-actualization. Sure, sure. I hear that. I hear that. Um, yeah. And then off it goes. Um, but, uh, yeah, very interesting film. Um, lot of um, very distinctive character designs. <laughs> yep, takes a little getting used to. Um, when did this movie come out again? Because um, it felt very nineties to me. Um, it's a little later than that, I think. I'm, I'm actually gonna check it out because I am a little off. Um, Two thousand one. Hmm. So basically, basically, nineties. Um, and it was not a space odyssey. No. Um, <laughs> Came out in 1983, for what it's worth. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, so, yeah, very interesting um, kind of a film. Um, made by Studio 4C, of all. Oh, it certainly does not match the Studio 4C style, which is. <laughs> I'm glad. Like, this, this, this works very well, what it's trying to do. Um, yeah, and that's a film. Again, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely film. I really, really, really wish there was like a. Uh, a dubbed version of this you could give to kids to watch. I mean, it would be a really great, you know, there, there are lots of little girls in America who would, this would be their favorite film. Um, but sadly, no. As far as I know, it's just, just a thing you gotta find. Um, and I, I agree, John and Chat. I think that, uh, I like that she didn't really punish the wizard. She's like, you know, your life is your punishment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not much I can do to yeah. you. <laughs> kind of now, here, the, the, what I'm seeing on YouTube is her, Arate is looking over with Ample walking up the hillside over the clouds reflected in the water. Yeah. Um, Ursa Yatsura, Beautiful Dreamer? Um, yeah. Gave me that feeling when I was yeah. watching this. And I'm just like, if I see like a bunch of people walking by the puddle and they're reflected, <laughs> and I'm going to be like, oh, now I know what's going on. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, ah. Uh. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and there are definitely you know, bits of other films in here a little bit. Um, yeah. I think it was uh, John and Chad pointed out that the, the opening is a little similar to the opening of Aladdin, you know, out in the streets kind of thing. Um, so uh, definitely little, little bits of, of that um, in the movie and just some, some other little kind of classically fairy tale things, as you were saying, and uh, Steve, and, and, and the movie in general. Um, and there was something else in here, I can't remember, um, that reminded me of another. I mean, obviously you have, um, um, let me see if I can find, um, uh, in just the general castle, obviously Castle Cagliostro. Field, yeah, okay. You know, um, in terms of all of the, the stories in general. But yeah. Um, yeah I like that. Start a Kickstarter. But for, for an English dub, I. Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> Tell you what, I'll, I'll download the movie and I'll do all the parts. There we oh, go. Oh, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'll <laughs> Six <myself>. years later, he <laughs> will be done. <laughs> I can. Yeah. Movie gets done in a weekend or so, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 oh yeah. <laughs> yeah my the movie's only an hour and forty-five minutes long. So how long can it take? Clearly, right. 
exactly. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts? I think this is a hidden gem for, for mm-hmm. anime watchers. Mm-hmm. I think this is something that, um, I won't say required watching, but I would mm-hmm. say that this is something that um, I would very much like to see someone do a panel on mm-hmm. uh, at, at a convention. I would like to see this screened at a convention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and you know what I would like to see is actually honestly, <laughs> this because I had elements of this for some reason popping in my head while I was watching it, mm-hmm. having a double feature of like this and um the last unicorn Ooh, yeah Ooh. you know mm-hmm. and you know kind of a thing but I, I do think this is a hidden gem um i think you know if you want something as the age-old question goes i have watched so much anime i'm kind of getting tired of it i want to do something new this is a good refresher i think this yeah. is something that will definitely be different than what you're used to mm-hmm. and if, if you are interested in a story and not just you know the 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 circus. Uh, what was it called? The circus of missiles. You know, and, and <laughs> the Itana circus. And, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and 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 the and the things is you know happening where things are like stop. You know, kind of stuff like that. If you want to, you know, just kind of just recharge. This is a very good recharging movie, and there's enough meat to this. I think mm. um, to this to have thoughts and conversation, yeah. and and yeah. you know that doesn't. That that isn't. See, here's the thing: is that when pe- people hear the word feminism, they're going to be turned off by that. And when you watch this movie, you go, "Yeah, this is about feminism to to a point," mm-hmm. but it's not. This is something that is accessible, yeah, to anybody mm-hmm. watching yeah. this. So it doesn't. You don't have to be a feminist yeah. to watch this and understand exactly. it, and enjoy it. Yeah. And you know, I mean, here we are, three guys talking about this. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I think I think this is I think this was good on them job well done absolutely job well done yeah i i I, 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 feminism in the broadest sense right right yeah yeah like yeah 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 Mm -hmm. john yeah i've certainly enjoyed the uh the self-empowering of of arete that you don't get to see in a lot of the little shortcut things that we see in a lot of anime and other stuff it's like you don't get just such a a developmental approach to this that it's going on and it's building and it's building to the point where finally she's out from under the thumb of of societal norms and restrictions and she has gone out now girl or a goat she's off yep she's doing her thing she's not going looking for protection from someone she's not looking to get rescued by anybody she's going and doing her own damn thing it's like Mm -hmm. this is a nice thing to see because it it comes about in in a way conceptually that you've follow it along and it doesn't come as a surprise there's not like a moment where it's like oh light bulb goes on i could do this myself it's like no you're watching this process of her breaking the spell and then the things she does to get herself out of this mess Mm -hmm. and it's like that is i think a really good thing to internalize you know for an audience to look at this and not you know not not that sailor moon isn't empowering in its own way but you know what i mean you this This, I think, provides a lot of the of the thought concept of the empowerment in yeah. its contained movie versus, like, you know, several seasons of a show. So. <laughs> totally. I mean, if I had written this, there would have absolutely been, like, knights coming to rescue her and princes and so forth. And, like, she still would have had to get out of it, you know, get out of it on her own and, like, like you know, um, with their help. But she, you know, with, with her as kind of driving, driving things forward. But having it be just her entirely on its own made it far more powerful. Yeah. Um, a much more effective kind of a, a story there. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think it, I, I love that that, I, that phrase of hidden gem. I think this this really is one of those things where yeah. you know you come across it and you're like, wow, that that's. I'm thinking about that more than I thought I would. You know, a, a day later, right. a couple yeah. days later, like it, it kind of sticks with you, and there, there's like sitting the meat on the bones. Well, it would be one of those things where I would, I would welcome an Arate two, yeah, where Arate is off having the best life, mm. and we get to see at the same time, so the other side of the coin mm. from her. Mm. Does anybody in the kingdom does her dad care? Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Does yeah. anybody do all the do the night guys show back up with their treasures, 
And the father says, well, I married her off to a wizard. Yeah. So sorry. Mm -hmm. You guys are out of luck. You, you know what I mean? Do you have one of the wizard's uh, people's observation satellites? Mm -hmm. you, you know, you see somebody on the other side of the galaxy going, yeah, he's still there. He's still not doing anything. <laughs> do you want to do anything about it? Yeah. Nah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like to like just oh. as, as as a wrap it up kind of yeah. thing. But you know what I mean? It's like yeah. that would be interesting to he see. Just imagine that they're just like looking in there going, "Damn, he turned out to be a prick." Just leave <laughs> just, you know, geez. Oh, I I absolutely imagine you would be cut back to them and go, "Do you know anything about it?" He hasn't learned his lesson yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like that's where I'd like to see. A, a part two that yeah. wraps those strings up but i think this this does it greatly for her as her character arc this is like good good on you good on you oh john and chat i like that what if something threatens her kingdom mm. and she like she like comes back to the kingdom just kind of curious and like bad things are happening and she has to decide do i do something to help the people who basically sold me off yeah the, the knights, the knights come back angry that she's gone and been married off, so they attack to yeah, like overthrow exactly. the king. Mm -hmm. Oh crap! Yeah, <laughs> I've raised an army and crossed the Rubicon. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and if I were her, I would probably just take one look at the valley, look at the kingdom under siege, and go. <laughs> <laughs> and then she does a transformation sequence, right? To super soldier Arate. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Mazinger Arerte. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, so that's Princess Arerte. Um, hope you guys found that interesting. And uh, that'll do it. Now we're going to take a quick break, just a few minutes, and then we'll be back to talk about more modern anime and the latest anime news. We will be right back. Woo!